You've probably heard of the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, sometimes it's hard to abide by this principle. In totalitarian art, it is the title that really appeals. Most people think that totalitarianism destroys all form of art and culture. In fact, that is one of the characterizations of totalitarianism, and in a way that is true, but what the author of this book, Igor Golomstok, explains is that totalitarian regimes also promote their own distinctive form of art. Of course, this comes with a political agenda. My name is Shirvan, and welcome to the Bookshelf by Caspian Report for Maidan TV. The idea to study totalitarian art dates back to the 1950s when Golomstok was guiding schoolchildren through the halls of the Pushkin Museum in Moscow. He noticed that the Russian children were unable to tell the differences between Nazi and Soviet art. This intrigued him and he started doing research on it and over time this started his new career and since then he wrote several books on the histories of various forms of art so he is an expert in his respective field and in totalitarian art Golomstok compares the histories of art across the totalitarian regimes like fascism during Mussolini's rule over Italy national socialism in Hitler's Germany communism during the Stalin era of the Soviet Union Mao's communist China and finally Saddam's Iraq. But the principles could also be applied to North Korea, Iran, Saudi Arabia and other modern day totalitarian states. In fact, one can apply this book to the histories of modern democracies as well, like the United States, France, Britain, etc. One way or another, most countries and governments have engaged in totalitarian propaganda and its distinctive art form. Now, Golomstok starts off by explaining that even though the totalitarian countries in the book have their own distinctive cultures, the most similar element is their form of art. This is really interesting because despite the cultural and social differences between Saddam, Stalin and Mao, their form of art is really the same. Whether it's fascism, national socialism or communism, Every totalitarian regime depicts iconic leaders in serene surroundings, like a landscape or a study room. Other elements include joyful people, smiling children, the working class, brave women, loyal soldiers and dedicated farmers. So there is a lot of elements of innocence, strength, loyalty and happiness in their art form. In fact, the author recalls an anecdote in which a Canadian critic visited the art museum in Moscow. And the Canadian guy noticed that everyone was smiling and laughing in the paintings, so he asked, why is everyone so happy? Then someone else replied, in the Soviet Union everyone is happy, there is nothing sad about it. The guy from Canada was stunned and asked, doesn't anyone ever get sick or break a leg? Upon which the other guy replied, yes, but that's not relevant. It is this perspective that gives the book its own dark sense of humor. Another example of this satire is how the continuous political shifts in the Soviet Union resulted in continuous artistic changes. For example, in the 1930s, Leon Trotsky was accurately depicted as the founder of the Red Army. When the Soviet political landscape changed, Trotsky was ousted out of the country and his pictures were completely altered. And when Stalin passed away, his paintings were altered as well. One of the most interesting psychological theories that the book discusses is how totalitarian art assigns a face to the state. And what I mean by this is that most of the statues, posters or paintings portray the face of the national leader or a founding father as a hero in an epic struggle. And by promoting this cult of personality, the state is indirectly evoking a sense of nationalism, loyalty and pride in the people. And the psychological effect of nationalism is turning a blind eye to the shortcomings of the state. The lesson here is that government approved art is merely a tool of the state used to mold the mass psychology of the nation. The book is filled with this kind of theories, anecdotes 
and it has over 200 illustrations of state-commissioned art. Ultimately, Totalitarian Art is a very unusual book, one that you normally wouldn't notice. But make no mistake, this is a unique book in every way. It is fascinating, bizarre, and in some cases even thought-provoking. If you ever wondered about the history of state propaganda, then Totalitarian Art is a great book to pick up. This was a review for the bookshelf by Caspian Report for Made on TV. Be sure to visit the social media pages and leave a comment. Anyway, thanks for watching and so